more on the side of what a woman does. So when the man comes home and he starts complaining and blaming other people and doing all the, and, and, and being overly vulnerable on this far end of the spectrum where it's like every little thing he's talking about, guess what? Your wife now has a fucking wife. That's what I hope a couple of days ago you told your husband happy Mother's Day. What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. Today, we're talking about the soft side for men. I know if we have another episode about soft skills where I said I'm a soft man, but this time we are talking about being vulnerable as a man. We're talking about vulnerability, but let's kind of tee it up with really, really thinking about the idea of vulnerability. And men are often taught that that vulnerability is a sign of freaking weakness and that they should not be vulnerable because they, they might get their little feelings hurt or they might get embarrassed and they'll be blushing in the face like little bitches or whatever else. And culture overall, it, it also has for a long time told men that they should be emotionless and masculine and others that, and then they should not show their feelings and that men should be afraid basically and avoid being vulnerable and especially if they grew up in an environment where emotions were were thought of as a bad thing or a bad behavior or or punished or or whatever else and since childhood many most men are taught that vulnerability equals weakness or you're a little bitch or you're just a pussy and and so then men are not supposed to be vulnerable it could also be hard for men to be vulnerable if there might be their again feeling of embarrassment or being hurt by someone's responses and have those feelings hurt and it seen as a sign of weakness, seen as being a little bitch. And when you're vulnerable, you put yourself in a position where you could possibly, again, get those little feelings hurt. So in, to prevent that from hurting your little man feelings, you put up this protective armor to keep yourself safe. So that's one side of the thought. Then you, you go on the other side of the thought and it's thinking, well, vulnerability is, is actually strength. And women want men to be more vulnerable and soft. And, and we're supposed to show our feminine side. And vulnerability is when a, a, a person shares something about themselves, whatever, their feelings, their experiences, their behaviors with another person to form a connection and, and learn about each other. So think about all these things. None of them are, not, they're kind of two extreme ends of the spectrum. And that's usually what we do here on the show. We talk about the different extreme ends of it and blend them together into symmetry. Some people say that vulnerability is, is a sign of courage and authenticity and that allows people to connect more deeply with other people. Now, all these things are probably true on both sides about vulnerability making you weak and, and, and afraid and, and a, a little bitch is the far end. And the other one is just be, be a vulnerable little soft little feminine freaking butterfly of a man. Now, both of any one of those right? Probably not. Again, that symmetry of those two together is probably somewhere where it should be for a man. I'll give some examples and we'll work through it. And I, I want to give you, I want to give you an example of a, a couple of clients. I had this, I, have, I had two clients recently. That's why I thought of this and it's been popping up a lot. You see it about on the internet a lot. You see it on social media a lot about, I'm just going to be vulnerable here. And you'll see people on social media fucking just pouring out all of their I don't know, all their, I think half of it's by bullshit just because they're supposed to be more vulnerable. So they come up with some bullshit stories and they ham it up. So, so it's, it's so great and deep and they're showing their soft side and they're being real and authentic and all this other shit, but it's really probably half a bullshit. But anyway, they pour all their shit on the internet. But anyway, all right, so I had these two clients and this is just in the last couple of months. I have both one-on-one -on -one coaching clients in, in the OTD, Operate to Dominate Coaching Program, but I also have clients in a group coaching program, the Men's Mentorship, the Freak Father Alliance, and just men I talk to in different events that we do that we're coaching in person on these big, big events that we run. So one client told me that he was 
struggling with some things in life and he was telling his wife about it and he, he was telling her about work and then he's telling her about problems with his family and telling her about problems with his mother and telling her about problems with his childhood and his father the next day and the next day complaining about his workout partners and his workout programs and all, every day was because he was supposed to be vulnerable because the, 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 the wife says and the women say, you could tell me anything. We could talk about anything. What are you thinking about? They'll say, what's on your mind? They'll say, so this guy takes it literally. And he is telling him every fucking thing that's on his mind because he wants to be vulnerable. He wants to show his soft side and the feminine side and all this other stuff and to have better connection with the wife and the spouse. Now that's again, the far fucking end of the spectrum that I think is probably maybe a bit too much. And we're going to break down what that symmetrical spot is. But then I had another client who told me that he had some things going on in business at the same time, three major things going on in business. And it was really a hard time dealing with it. And he usually keeps it inside and, and doesn't talk about it, doesn't bring work into the house. But one day, he told us to talk to his wife about some things that were on his mind, some things he was struggling with, so she would know what he was dealing with. And you know what? She appreciated that. But also, he doesn't come home every day and do it. So he, he's on the, almost on that far other far end of the spectrum, but he at least talked about it and brought it up at the right time and at the right place so that he's not completely on the other far end of the spectrum. So think about that. Then the complete far end of the spectrum would be someone who just has all this bullshit building up inside, all these bullshit stories are telling themselves in their head, and they just keep it all inside. And that's what most men do is on two of the far ends of the spectrum. Either they bitch and complain and moan about every little thing to, to their spouse, to their kids, to their business partners, to their friends and family, especially the spouse. Well, let's keep it in there. But when I say the spouse, it also could mean anyone important to you or the people that you might unload your shit onto. But most men suffer in silence. Most men self-destruct in silence. Most men suicide in fucking silence. That's why 80 or 90% of suicides are fucking men. Because that's what they do. They go so far into that spec, the other end of the spectrum, where they're just suffering in silence and they lead to their self-fucking destruction. And let me tell you, when, when women say they want to they wanna hear it or they want to know the, what you're thinking or they say, so what are you thinking? And sometimes like, I'm thinking fucking nothing. They are something some, so stupid and not serious. But they, they say they want to hear it and they want to know about it. But what they're really saying is they want to know that you're just man enough to have awareness and acknowledge that you do have some form of fucking emotions because you are a human inside and that you're capable of dealing and regulating and having emotional regulation and emotional discipline to deal with your own shit. That's all they're really telling you. They don't want you coming home every fucking day and bitching about all your problems and bitching about work and your family and your brother and your father and your childhood. And you're just this whiny, bitchy little fucking person. And not to say that that's what women do, but that's more on the side of what a woman does. So when the man comes home and he starts complaining and blaming other people and doing all the and, and, and being overly vulnerable on this far end of the spectrum where it's like every little thing he's talking about. Guess what? Your wife now has a fucking wife. That's what she has. Oh, my producer likes that. Your wife now has a wife. So you should hope a couple of days ago you told your husband happy Mother's Day when that came about. And, and, and then on top of that, she thinks she wants to know this stuff, but she doesn't really want to know it. And then she might even think she wants to solve this, your, your issues and your problems. And she might even try. But what she really wants to just know is that you're a fucking man that has some self-awareness and some self-regulation, emotional intelligence, intelligence, emotional discipline to be just knowing that you're aware that you're feeling that you have these emotions or feelings or thoughts or whatever inside and you're capable of navigating those crazy chaotic waters as a man that that it, you're showing that you're a, a fucking mature man who can th that she could be safe ab around and respected around and one that's able to handle the pressure and conflict long term because trust me she's going to bring lots of conflict into your life guaranteed it's just their job in life is to test us and challenge us and provide conflict. That's what they're here for. So yeah, be, they say be more vulnerable, be more open, have the soft side, all this other stuff. But when you do that overly, when you're on this end and you're just going overboard and you're that wife that has a wife now, guess what? It's disgusting to them. It's disappointing to them. What the fuck? I just want to know that you got your shit together. You could deal with this shit. 
And even though they're motherly, nurturing, might want to go and fucking help you out and come up with solutions, they don't really need to. And they, don't, they might even try. And then we'll get into that in a second, how to uh, deal with that. But what you need to do as a man is pick and choose your fucking battles. Know when to be like this one other client on this end where when it was the right time and place to bring up specific intentional things that were on your mind that maybe you do want a little help with or maybe you don't want help with, but you just want to kind of get off your chest to your wife or whatever or to whoever. But to be bitching every day is just disgusting and fucking disappointing and it is not the way a man fucking operates. So what you need to do is have that group of men have that men's group like we have in the Freak Father Alliance, which is a men's mentorship group coaching program where I, I pretty much help entrepreneur fathers and men develop a, a no excuses, badass mindset so that they could build more muscle, make more money and have more meaning while they attack this mission in life to create this ideal lifestyle of freedom and time freedom for their families. That's what we do in the Freak Father Alliance, and, and that's their place when it's time to be vulnerable. That's the, their gr grounds to do that, when it's time to vent or time to, to bitch or whatever else. You need that men's group around you. You need those people around you, those other men that you respect enough and trust enough to be transparent when you need to be and receive feedback from and be will, willing to reveal that little bitch side of you or that weaker side of you if needed because you need to get it out so you're not suffering in silence like that extreme end who's suffering in silence and fucking self-destructing. Of course, you need to take complete ownership for your emotions or whatever and be fully responsible for it and be fully able and capable to understand and regulate these things. But you need to claim these things instead of fucking blaming other people. It's fucking you. It's not someone else. Your emotions are yours and not someone else. You can't blame someone else. And yeah, you need to be able to express them and not suppress them and not suffer in silence. Be around other men who are willing to let you vent and willing to let you show a little bit of that bitch side because we all have it in us a little bit. We need to bitch once in a while, but is a time and a place for it. You shouldn't be going to your family and to your wife and your kids and just being a bitch fest every day and acting like a little schoolgirl. You should be around other men who allow you to vent. But here's the thing to it. They allow you to vent, but they are willing to confront you and call you out for your bitching and complaining and your fucking excuses if you're bitching and complaining day after day and week after week on the same shit and you're not fucking doing anything about it. You're making no changes. You're not taking any advice. You're not making any forward progress to do something about it. They'll let you talk about your fears, but they're going to confront you on how the fuck you're working through it. They'll let you talk about how maybe you were being a little bitch or how you were whatever, your little bitch fest and your little, your venting that you need to do. They will allow you to have that and give you that space to do it around other men who you trust and respect but be ready to be called out on your shit. And if you're not calling out your little bros that are sitting there bitching to you about the same shit all the fucking time, you're not willing to call them out on it, then you're just as fucking bad as them. You're just as much of a bitch as they are. They're showing up, being that vulnerable for that time in the right place with the group of men. But if they're doing it over and over and you're not saying like, what the fuck? Why are you not doing anything about this? You've been bitching about this for, for six months and you've done nothing about it. You're bitching about an employee or you're bitching about your job or you're bitching about the industry you're in, or the place where you live. Actually, just had a client today in the, in the Free Father Alliance in the group program said he's got friends in, in England who just bitch about the weather all the time. And it's just gloomy, and they hate it there. They hate the city they're in, and they just do it day after day, month after month, year after year. Then move, motherfucker. There is a bus leaving every town, heading out of town, every fucking day, every hour on the hour. Go and fucking do something about it. You are not stuck in any old place. Do something. You, are, you don't like your situation. Do something about it. So it's your job to call those men out that are bitching and complaining. When I say you need a group of men to vent and to be vulnerable, about, it's not just so you could just pour a vomit, a bunch of, of, of bitchiness on them, the same bitchiness all the time, but it's so that you can get it out, vent it out, 
but then be willing to take some fucking harsh, straightforward, manly feedback and then implement like a motherfucker and do something about it. So you're not coming back a week later bitching about the same thing. There's nothing worse than a man that bitches about that you can't be a man. You're not even a man if you're just bitching about the same thing over and over again and fucking doing nothing about it. And the reality of it is most men are missing on these type of relationships with other men where they can be vulnerable and can vent because they don't have that group of trusted and respected men that they could be around. And most men are missing out on those types of relationships with other men and definitely missing out on the types of relationships with other men who are willing to call them out on their bullshit when they keep up with the same bullshit and, and complaining and blaming on a regular basis. The point of having that space of other men, the point of the Freak Father Alliance, when I give the men the, the open the, the, the open the, the floodgates to just vent. We have sessions sometimes where it's just a bitch fest. It's just a venting session. And some of the stuff maybe we'll try to work through, but some of it's just to not suffer in silence, to have somewhere to fucking share that shit with. We do it there. Let that dig in. We do it there in that space so that you don't do it over there, meaning at your house with your wife, with your fucking kids. Do it here with men who can fucking take it, who have thick skin, who could deal with your bullshit and call you out on your bullshit if you're not doing anything about it, give you maybe some feedback or advice, or maybe they're just to let you pour out your vomit out your bullshit, but do it here so that you don't do it there. If you get anything out of this, let that sink in. Do it here so that you don't do it there. And then if, if you feel the need to share any, some, whatever, certain things with your wife, with your kids or whatever, pick and choose your battles. Know the time and the place and the specific things you want to do with a specific reason why that's what you want to share. And then maybe even let them know. Be like, listen, I'm doing some work. I'm trying to work through some shit, some challenges I'm facing. I have the resources. I'm working through it to overcome these obstacles. I'm working with it with my group of men in life. And I'm getting some, some mentorship and, and coaching and feedback. And if I still want to bring this up, just to work this problem out out loud. You don't need to give me any feedback. You don't need to try and solve anything. And that's how you would approach it on those times you want to do it. Unless there was something you want feedback, specifically ask for feedback on this situation. Otherwise, just let them know that you want to just get this out there to whoever. And you don't need any feedback. You don't need anyone to be the be your mommy and solve things. You just something that you feel the need to share with that person different story instead of just suppressing it and being this little bitch that just sucks it all inside and you build up all this resentment and next thing you know you, you, you built it up for so long and you fucking explode at the wrong time to the wrong person to the wrong degree for the wrong fucking reasons and then you're just this emotional little bitch boy so know the time and place get your group of men that you can trust and respect that give you that space to bitch but we're going to call you out when you're overly bitchy and pick and choose the time and place if and when it's something you might talk to your spouse or your kids about to go and vent, but do it in the right way by setting it up and pre-framing it the way I just said about getting the feedback or getting the re resolving of it or whatever else. So then when, when th these other men in your group, how do you respond when a man is being vulnerable and a man is venting out and bitching out, even if it's for the first time? Sometimes all you have to do is acknowledge their courage for being vulnerable. So yeah, sometimes it does take fucking courage to be vulnerable. As long as you're not on either far end of those two spectrums that we talked about and you're just vomiting it out all the time. Just acknowledge that you appreciate them sharing that with you and trusting you as a man in their group of men to, to trust in and just let them know that it's confidential that what you're talking about. And if they want feedback or if they want you to help them work through it just to let you know if not you're there to let them just vent it out so that they do it with you and not over there where they shouldn't do it where it's going to fuck up their relationships fuck up their life fuck up their energy and bring this certain poison into their home keep all that in mind when it comes to being vulnerable don't fall into the trap that society or the women or the internet or social media tells you, oh, you just got to be vulnerable or let's just talk about everything. Go pour it out on the fucking internet. Go pour it out on your wife. Go pour it out on your kids and you'll just be seen as a little bitch boy. Pack it in these ways and I guarantee you, you'll have more emotional awareness, more self-awareness, more emotional regulation and better relationships overall 
and you won't be such a fucking tightwad because you're not on this end where you're just suffering in silence and self-destructing. Find that synergy in between a vulnerability. That's the sweet spot of vulnerability as a freaking man. So let's get to fucking work on all the things we do on this show and watch all the previous episodes of this show. And this is the exact kind of stuff, again, that we dig into in the Freak Father Alliance. We actually just had a conversation about this just today. It's what made me think of doing this episode. We got deep into this conversation. I said, you know what? This would be a perfect episode to dive into. So if you want some information about the Freak Father Alliance, the men's mentorship group coaching program on your mindset, your muscles, your money, your mastery, and your meaning as a man, just send me a message. I'll give you all the information. We'll get you onboarded where we meet weekly on a live video call and we have daily interaction in a private VIP membership site and community online. Send me a message. I'll get you hooked up on the Freak Father Alliance and start being vulnerable only to the degree to the right people and do it over here so that you don't do it over there. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.